Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch and here we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Protests continue in Tunisia against Sky Sites power grab. Over 10,000 workers of the tractor company John Deere may go on strike. Italian trade unions hold massive protests and US and Taliban delegations hold talks in Doha. In our first story, thousands of protesters took to the streets of the Tunisian capital Tunis on Sunday, October 10th. They were denouncing President Kaya Said's power grab and demanding the resumption of parliament. The protesters raised slogans such as the people against the coup d'etat and the revolution is not dead. They were talking about the 2011 popular uprising in the country. This was the second time protests were organized since President Said announced on September 22nd that he would suspend parts of the 2014 constitution and rule by decree. The protests were jointly called by different groups including the Nahada party and citizens against the coup. The protesters claimed that a large number of people were prevented from reaching the protest venue by the security forces. They were also stopped from reaching Avenue Habib Burgiba, where the protest was held. On Saturday, Tunisia's leftist workers' party had organized a similar protest, demanding an end to populism and the restoration of popular democracy in the country. Speaking at the venue, Ammar Amrosia, a member of the Central Committee of the party, claimed that President Said's lack of a plan to resolve the country's economic and social problems makes him similar to post-revolution governments. He emphasized that Tunisia needs a third way against Said's dictatorship and the Islamism of Nahada and its allies. President Said had invoked Article 80 of the Tunisian constitution on July 25th and sacked the Prime Minister and suspended the parliament. At that point, he cited political instability and the failure of the government to address economic issues and the COVID-19 pandemic. He also expressed his willingness last month to bypass the 2014 constitution altogether and rule by decree. He appointed Najla Baud and Ramdan as the new Prime Minister on September 27th. In our next story, the world's largest agriculture machinery corporation is facing a looming strike action by thousands of workers in several plants in the United States. After overwhelmingly rejecting a six-year contract offer by John Deere on Sunday, October 10th, union locals of the United Auto Workers have announced a strike deadline of October 13th. This is for the company to respond with an offer that concedes the demands of the workers. If the company does not come up with a better contract offer for the thousands of workers employed across three states, this would be the first strike the company faces in decades and possibly the biggest strike action in recent history. Sunday's vote held among UAW locals, organizing workers in 12 John Deere plants across the states of Illinois, Iowa and Kansas, represented over 10,000 workers. The vote had over 90% of members voting against the contract negotiated by the company with UAW negotiators. None of the locals reported a no vote that fell below 85% of the voting members. This is the first time since the UAW strike of 1986 that John Deere workers have rejected the company's contract offer. The 1986 strike organized by UAW went on for more than five months, which eventually ended in a victory for the workers. The main point of contention for workers is now the tired system of wages and benefits, adding another tire of workers on top of the already too tired system. John Deere is the largest agricultural equipment and machinery company, employing close to 70,000 workers around the world as of 2020. Most of its operations are concentrated in North America. The company reported US dollars 15 billion profits over the course of the last six-year contract, which will expire on October 13th. In our next story on October 11th, Monday, Italian trade unions, students and youth groups and leftist political parties held countrywide mobilizations and a general strike. They were protesting the assault on labour rights, austerity policies, the handling of the COVID-19 crisis, inflation and the conduct of the G20 summit in Rome. The protesters denounced the attack on workers' rights by the Mario Draghi-led government in the country. They also condemned the far-right attack on the headquarters of the trade union Italian General Confederation of Labour or CGIL in Rome. In addition to Rome, protests were held in Turin, Genoa, Milan and many other cities. Workers from private enterprises such as Whirlpool and FedEx and many other organisations who have been fighting layoffs also held strikes at their workplaces. The strike takes place as the working class across Italy has been devastated by crises inflicted by the pandemic and the austerity-driven policies of various governments. Fascist forces are also resurfacing in the mainstream with the support of far-right mainstream political parties in the country. And finally, US and Taliban delegations held a round of discussions over the weekend. These were the first talks between the two parties since the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan and the US withdrawal. According to a US official, the discussions focused on security and, to quote terrorism concerns, the rights of women and girls as well as evacuations from Afghanistan as reported by Al Jazeera. However, observers have pointed out that the US agenda would also have involved a bit to re-establish a presence in the country after being forced to leave a few months ago. For the Taliban side, the major issue was believed to be an attempt to break through on the financial front. 
The country is facing a massive financial crisis as before the fall of the Ashraf Ghani government, 75% of the government spending was dependent on international aid. Most of this aid has stopped. Following the Taliban takeover, the US also blocked $9 billion of Afghanistan's central bank reserves. The talks also acquired significance in light of the suicide attack on a mosque in the city of Kunduz on Friday that led to the death of dozens of people. The Islamic State in Khorasan province or ISKP claimed responsibility for the attack. Taliban has made it clear that it does not need US assistance to tackle the ISKP. One of the terms of the 2020 agreement between the US and the Taliban was that the latter would not harbour terrorist groups. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.